Hey, morning, Rob. How are you? Hey, Maureen, how are you? Good to see you. How's your morning so far? My morning has been fantastic. It's even better now I get to work with you on something. <laughs> Glad to hear you say that. I hope you keep that in mind. Really? Uh, What's yeah, up? Look, I just got a call from the vice chancellor and uh, it's quite exciting. Uh, we're going to have a visit from the French ambassador today. Oh, that's awesome. T sorry, today. Today. Yes, it is awesome. That's short notice, but awesome. Yeah, it's even more short notice than you think. <laughs> Put together a presentation for him. Okay. Let's do a mock presentation of a like marketing campaign to send our students to France. Okay. It's really important that we get this right. The VC has been working really hard on this relationship and there's a lot that rides on it. We need to demonstrate today a kick-ass presentation. Okay. That sounds fine. We are, we, we are Australia's innovative university, so I'm sure we can knock out something pretty good by the end of the day. I would think, but it's not by the end of the day. Oh, really? We've got half an hour. Sorry, say that again. We've got half an hour. Half an hour. So hang on, let me just get this straight. So <laughs> what you're saying is that in the next half an hour, we need to prepare a mock social media campaign in order to impress an ambassador, because if we don't, our vice chancellor is going to lose face. You got it. In a nutshell, that's it. <laughs> so... What are we going to do? I guess it's time to put our AI skills to the test. Okay, cool. So what well, have you got in mind? What I thought was, look, my journey is my thing. So I think I'll get to work on putting together some unique Instagram posts we can uh, propose for the campaign. And given your expertise in videos, I'd like you to develop some videos for TikTok and Instagram. How does that sound? That sounds okay. Yeah, I've been using a couple of great tools. There's one called Flicky and there's another one called Video. So I reckon I can pull some stuff together pretty quickly. And I guess at the end of that, you said presentation. So in what, in the next half an hour, we're supposed to have a presentation done for the ambassador. Some sort of presentation. Okay. I think we're up for it. Okay. Ready to get to work now? The Innovative University. Let's go do it. Okay. Let's go do it. So what I want is a couple of really good images to use on some Instagram posts. For that, I'm going to jump on Midjourney, which is this AI tool that enables me to create some pictures where I can just enter a prompt. It'll generate a range of pictures based on the prompt that I've entered. It's a great tool. It works really quickly. It'll give me different options and there's no copyright on it. I can just save the image and plug it into my campaign. That's perfect. I'll show you how it works now. So Midjourney runs on the Discord. It's really quite straightforward. You just join one of the rooms. And then once you're in there, you can just enter a prompt. So you go slash imagine. And then the limit really is your imagination. So thinking about Paris, I think about being a student there, a nice sunny day. There's a social life aspect that everyone you skin on, you go and sit in a cafe at a terrace, it's sunny and there's a good atmosphere. So I want to try to represent that in an image. So I'll do slash imagined and then I'll enter my prompts. So I'm saying photorealistic image, a group of three or thereabouts students looking towards each other. I want a sense of connection. Sticking at a not door terrace of a Parisian cafe on a sunny day. I've put an aspect ratio to give it a bit of background, V5 for quality. I'll hit enter and straight away, it's going to start generating a choice of four images for me, which is great. At least then I get to pick which one I want. I'm going to show you how that unfolds. So whilst that's already generating, I'm also going to show you a different type of prompt we can use, which is also super helpful. The other one is doing slash describe, which is also really cool. You do that and then you enter an image that you've been inspired by and you want something in the similar style and they will then give you prompts so that you can then create more images in a similar style. I'll show you. And already my other picture is coming through. This is brilliant how fast it goes. Look at that. It's almost there, 93%. So I'll also... Okay, there it is. Sorry, I'm too impatient. Look at those pictures. I'm so excited. They're really good. So what I'll do is I'll save a couple of them by themselves. So to do that, I'll upscale. So say you really like number one, you'll do upscale one. And then I might also do upscale 
number four. Quite like the background on that one. And then they'll give me those single pictures. So back to my describe. What I do is I look for an image of a girl with a hat looking up the, at the Eiffel Tower. I figure that's something that can be easily related to. I quite like this one. So what I'll do is I'll save that image. Oh, I'll copy it. And now I'll get back into Discord. I'll get back to my describe image. Please attach a file. So I'll just do there. And straight away, you can see it's thinking it's going to give me four different prompts to try to generate a similar image. There you go. It's given me four types of prompts. I'm having a look quite like the what number three is saying in terms of prompts. Travel to Paris and Eiffel Tower with a woman style of timeless artistry. So I'm going to use that one and copy it and use it to generate a new picture that I can use. Okay, let's give it a shot. Let's see what that prompt generates. If I don't like it, I've got another three different prompts that I can use. Now, in the meantime, hey, look, that's the upscale. That photo that I said I, or photo image that I wanted to use, it comes through, it's brilliant. Drinking coffees. And it's something that any good Australian will enjoy. So I'll save that image. In my friend's marketing in folder. All right, save that. Oh, that's not what I expected when I entered the prompt, but hey, it actually looks nice. So I'll upscale, I think the number four looks quite nice. I'll upscale that one. Okay, here is the single image now. That's great. I really like it. So I'll go and save that as well. Rob, how are you going? Well, Marine is really roaring, so I better do some catching up here. This is Flicky. Flicky is an AI powered video editor. And if I go up here to new file, I can now create a new video. So let's do our study in France on exchange video. I'm going to hit create. Now, lots of different options here. I can, could just create scenes and insert my own footage. That's really nice if I have all of those things. But if I want to be a little bit more cunning, what I can do is click on this convert button. And here we have the options of taking in external content and having Flicky do the hard work for us. So let's choose this blog to video option. Here we decide what length that we want it to be. Now these are social media videos that I'm trying to create. And what I've done is gotten a blog post from a former student, former student of the Australian Innovation University. And I'm gonna post that link in there and hit submit. What's gonna happen is Flicky in the background is analyzing that blog post and is going to automatically generate a video for me. Okay, here we go. Very quickly, I've got my first draft which is up. But before I hit play on this so that you can actually hear what this sounds like, I'm gonna click on this name here, Sarah, because we have all of these different AI generated voices that go along with it. Now we're talking to an Australian audience, so we want an Australian voice. And in terms of gender, female voice, since more girls than boys participate on international study experiences, I'm gonna go with a female voice and we can actually listen to these to see what they sound like. Content using lifelike AI voices in less than a minute. That's not bad. Flicky helps you create audio and video content using lifelike AI voices in less than a minute. That's not too bad. Flicky helps you create audio and video content using lifelike AI voices in what? less than a minute. I quite like Freya. So we're going to use Freya. I'm going to apply this voice to all sections, and there we go. We now have voiceover that has been done. So this video is essentially ready to go. Let's hit play. In France on exchange. Just say OUI, 10 reasons to study abroad. <laughs> OUI. Study abroad in France combines traveling and education. It offers unique experiences and stories to tell. Learning a new language is an inevitable benefit. <laughs> Living in a foreign country takes you out of your comfort zone. You get to immerse yourself in a new culture. So this is done all right. There are still some things that just don't seem to match at all. So this footage of these particular dancers doesn't seem, don't seem to match what we're looking for. So what I'm gonna do is go to their stock library, to Flicky stock library and just hit search. I'm just searching for France. And we're gonna get a whole bunch of different clips that come up. Now you can see some of these belong to paid 
plans and some don't. So I'm just going to pick one that's free. And then that will automatically be added into my project. There we go. So I'm going to keep working on this video clip. But before I do, I want to try another type of project here in Flicky. So let's create a new file. And we're going to do study in France 2. And hit create. I'm going to come up here to the convert again. And we're going to convert an idea to video. And this I think you're going to love. So all I'm going to do here is enter a short description of what I'm looking for. Studying in France is a highly valuable, fun experience for Australian university students. Students should consider exchange in France. Done. We can decide what style of video we want to make in it make it and so let's choose a marketing video it's going to be short and let's hit submit okay it's generated me a video including some text for this video so i can hit play studying in france is Here a really valuable fun experience for australian university students students should consider exchange in france discover a world of culture history and unforgettable memories when you embark on a university exchange Okay, so you start to get the idea. So of course we want to adjust things like the voices. Let's put this one in a male voice just so we've got something different. Duncan. Let's listen to Duncan. Yeah, Duncan. Duncan is my man. So we're going to select Duncan. And in fact, sorry, I need to select Duncan for all of those, for all of the clips. So we're going to go Duncan, apply to all, done. So I'm going to keep working on these videos. Let's see where Marine's up to. Okay, cool. So I've saved some images that I'm happy with to upload on Instagram. I need some captions to go with it. I'm a bit short on inspiration right now. I'm going to jump on ChatGPT and ask it to help me, inspire me. There's a few different versions of ChatGPT. I'm going to jump to the latest one, which is the most sophisticated one. And I'm going to ask it to write me three captions for Instagram posts designed to encourage university students to study in France. Let's see what it comes up with. Unlock your potential in the land of art, culture, and innovation. Experience the French charm while pursuing your academic dreams. Surely that's one that's going to resonate with the ambassador. Explore a world of opportunities and let friends be your classroom. Unleash your passion for learning and immerse yourself in the rich history of French education. That's pretty neat too. I like those three. I'm going to save them. I'm going to run it one more time to see what else I get. And then I'll pick my favorite three and run with those. Back to Rob. What I'm going to do is to open up another AI video tool. And this one is called Video. Video is a fantastic program. And what video allows you to do is to import existing videos and it will then automatically create your social media clips from them. So what I'm gonna do is to choose my video file and I just happen to have had, done a video in the past on why you should study in France. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump across into our YouTube account. I'm gonna to go to my content. I'm going to search for our existing content and I've got my video, what you need to know about studying in France. I'm just going to grab the URL from this video and I'm going to drop it right here into video. Oops, there we go. It allows me to choose my format, so I'm going to choose all three formats. I'm going to hit continue. And now I get to select from different templates. So I can choose from these various templates. You can see I've already pre-selected some. These are my defaults. For portrait ones, you can choose different templates as well. There's some that I've actually chosen before. Landscape is the same. I have three that I've previously selected. I just hit continue. My handles, well in this case, I'll just leave my Choosing Your Uni is my YouTube channel all about helping people choose an Australian institution. Check it out. And there we go. You just have to wait for that to process. So while that is processing and I'm waiting for the email, I'm going to go back and edit my Flicky videos and let's go over and see what Marine's been working on in the meantime.
Right, so now that I've got my captions and my images, what I want is to create some Instagram posts. Oh, I'm not great at Instagram posts, but thank God for Canva. It's going to do it for me, so I'll show you how. That's great. I've just logged in into Canva, and I'll jump into Trap Magic Design. So it's a new AI-powered tool. So I insert media. So in this instance, I'm going to insert a picture of our students sitting at a cafe. I'm going to refine it by category. I want social media. I want Instagram post. There you go. It's created me something. I'll select the first one. I want to customize it. Yes, please. Great. It's got my photo. I'm going to copy in the text from ChatGPT. Great. S study on exchange in France. Yay. Great. Happy with that. Now, I'll share it. Download. There you go going to be ready to use. How quick was that? Okay, it's downloaded. It, look, it's not perfect. If I had more time, I'd play with it a little bit longer, make it better. But the reality is the French ambassador is going to be, oh, he's going to be here very soon. So I need to save this. We'll do the job. I'm happy with it. I'll continue. Back to Rob. Okay. Now I think we should be right. We should be right. I'm feeling confident. Okay, we'll see you in a few minutes. So the ambassador has arrived on campus at Innovation University. And we're nearly here. Maureen has now sent me over some of her, her social media tools. I've got my videos. Now we need to get into a presentation. And for that, I'm using a tool which is called SendSteps AI. And once you've logged in, created yourself an account, it's as simple as saying here, presentation to convince Australian university students to study on exchange in France. Now, when I jump into here, it asks me if I want to upload a document so I can actually upload, for example, a report, or you can also create quizzes online using this. So SendSteps allows you to both create a presentation, people can engage with that via a link, but then also have quizzes embedded in that presentation. Because this asks, gives me more opportunities for information, I'm actually gonna drop this into ChatGPT. I'm gonna come into ChatGPT and ask it for the outline of a presentation. Now, while ChatGPT is working, I'm going to show you another tool. And this one is called Site, site.ai slash assistant. So here, what the difference between Site and ChatGPT is that Site uses as a data source the academic journals, which means literally millions and millions of research articles are being used as the data source but the, it's, I believe it actually connects into the ChatGPT engine. Why should university students study abroad on exchange? So I'm going to pop that in, and Site is going to go off and consult the actual academic journals, which is interesting, and then generate me a whole bunch of information. So while it's thinking, I'm going to come back over to chat GPT and I'm just going to grab all of this stuff and we're going to go to send steps we're going to try dropping this all in here we've still got some space left and so I'm going to go to site which is here I'm going to grab this data so this is coming from the academic journals which means the data that comes out of site has been peer-reviewed so this has got a very high level of trust associated with it. So I'm going to copy that. I'm also going to drop that into SendSteps. Pump. Let's just go next. 
heaps of data in here. We're going to put this presentation in English. Who are we present, presenting to? And this gives you levels of formality. So in this case, we're presenting to colleagues because it's not students, but I could just do a student one, which would adjust the level of language that's used. And then we get to start choosing things. This is a lot of fun. So something like send steps, very powerful. For example, if you have to generate slides for a presentation very quickly and you've got a report that you can feed into it, it just allows you to very quickly and easily generate basic slides, as you'll see. Why don't we do this one, the French connection. Let's go next. And then we get to decide how long it's going to be. Now, we don't have very long with the ambassador, so let's just choose the slides here. Speaking of the ambassador, time is ticking. Okay, it's ready. Let's have a look at what it's given us. So over here on the side, we can see outline of the presentations. We've got different images. So all of this can be adjusted, which is lots of fun. So for example, what we might want to do is to change out this image and we want to upload an image. Actually going to get rid of that. We're going to grab this and then go into assets and then we're going to grab Marine's first post here, which is lovely. Cool. Why should a student consider being on exchange? So I'm going to change the format, click to add some media, and we're going to upload another, upload another image. Get rid of this one. Let's drop in another one. Here we go. I'm going to save that one there. Now, once again, when we show this to the ambassador later on, all we're intending to do is to show him different examples of what we've created so that he sees that we're very organized and we're ready to start talking about studying in France. And I reckon this is going to make the vice chancellor look pretty good considering we found out about this about 15 minutes ago. There we go. So we've got a whole bunch of stuff going in there. And the one thing that we haven't put in here yet are the videos. So I'm going to add another slide. This I really like. We're just going to drop in a video and all I need to do is add the link to a YouTube video. Unfortunately, I, while Maureen was doing her work, I have uploaded our videos that we've created right here into YouTube. And all I need to do is to drop in that link. And that is now ready to go. So the great thing about this is that I can just add in different slides, various points. So I'm going to drop in a couple more videos. So I've got the first one, I'm going to grab the second one, click to add video, save. And when you play back this video, it just streams it straight off YouTube. So it looks really good. The audio is great. There's none of that kind of jumpiness that you get when you, when you embed videos in PowerPoint presentations, if they're like hosted on your desktop, for example, none of that. And so now in our presentation to our to the ambassador I've actually got a series of short videos that we can play these clips as you've seen they're social media length so they're nice and punchy and there we go we've got a presentation that's pretty much ready to go essentially I'm just going to play this on a web browser when we are in the meeting room with the ambassador Whew. we made it stop the clock let's get marine on the line Hey, Rob, how are you going? Very nice. That was great. How are you? Good. Posts are done. I guess you've seen that. Yep. The presentation. Presentation is done. We are now ready for the ambassador. Awesome. Well done. I'm so excited. Well, tell you what, we've still got time for a coffee. Isn't that amazing? Time for a coffee <laughs> and a chance to practice our presentation before the big moment. Good job. Good job, Rob. Thanks. Okay, so we're going to take some questions and comments now, but while you think about what you want to ask, the Global Society is really passionate about international education and how we can make it more effective and more engaging. And these AI tools are just one part of that puzzle. So if there's something that we can do to support you and your team, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. We love this technology. And one thing is guaranteed, as this year unfolds, the technology is just going to get better and better. So we want to keep you at the leading edge of 
what these tools can do for you. Make sure you hit the follow button up there on the Global Society's LinkedIn page, and that way you will get access to these live streams as soon as they are announced. But for now, questions and comments, hit us up. I'm gonna take these headphones off. Maureen is gonna come in from the other room because one of the difficulties we discovered as we were planning this session for you, if you wanna have multi cameras and people working on different things at the same time, having them literally at the desk on the opposite side creates a lot of feedback and a lot of problems. So in she comes. Good job, Maureen. That was a lot of fun. Hi, hi everyone. <laughs> so have, have we got some stuff in the chat? Have we got some questions up? We do. Hang on. We do. Okay. So, firstly, there've been there was a question about about these. Will we send around a list of tools? Yes. This is not going to be a public resource. This recording, but for anyone that registered, and that includes you, we will be sharing the recording with you. And what I would recommend is that when that email comes through, now is the time to share it with your colleagues because. This technology is changing so fast, isn't it, Marine? Even just since we started thinking about this. It is. It's, it's hard to keep up. It changes on a weekly basis. It's quite mind-blowing, but it's also really exciting. So share it now. Make sure you share that email right now with your colleagues. This is the moment where they can get the advantage already out of what exists, and there's more coming online constantly. Yeah, and they're really good tools to familiarise yourself with because, of course, like anything, it takes a little bit of playing around with it to understand how they work, but then they are very helpful and they can be great time saving, time savers. In regards to, is there a setting to make sure any images were royalty copyright free? That's one of the great things with Mid Journey. So it's a, an AI generator of images. So they're unique images. The image you create, n not one image is going to be created the same by someone else. So it's based on the prompts that you're entering. And so there's no royalties attached to it. So you can just use those images without any issues. And you've got lots of options in terms of the type of images. So there I was trying to create images that looked more like photography, but you can do it like a cartoon. You could do it like a painting. The possibilities are endless, really. Al Alison there in the chat does raise a really good point around this. And it's actually a point of contention and debate amongst legal academics and amongst ethicists. Where does this technology leave us? There are many AI tools out there, particularly in the image generation space, that have essentially just like they compose images based on other parts of other images that it's trawled on the web. Midjourney is unique in that sense that it is generating new images all the time. So you do need to read the terms of service, whoever who actually does that, but you do need to read the terms of service if you're going to be using those for a commercial purpose. With Midjourney, once you've generated images, if you're on a paid plan, we're on a paid plan, we're using this thing all the time, then you're allowed to use those images rights free. If you're using one of their free plan, then you need to acknowledge the source of the image, which is mid-journey. Same goes for some of these other AI engines around text. ChatGPT is generating content that's completely unique and new, yep. so that's fine. Next question. Brella, with send steps, do you know if it's possible to pre-upload presentation to use the same branded slides as a base? Yes, it does upload. I'm not sure about the upload question, but you can create templates. So if you want to create something which is on brand for your institution and that you can use over and over, yes, that is definitely possible. It's an incredible platform, particularly if you want to have your mind completely blown Jump into send steps and upload a short report. It doesn't deal with big reports very well, but upload a short report, five pages or something like that, and ask it to do a presentation for you and just be like, I'm never doing my own PowerPoint again, quite honestly. I think something to be to keep in mind as well is that things that it can't really do yet or that it struggles to handle right now, it might be capable of doing in two, three months time or by the end of the year. The changes are actually very rapid. Yeah, very rapid. Siobhan, site aren't particularly incredible or valuable. Yeah, mounting arguments for certain experiences. Mm -hmm. Look, there's already a discussion um, in legal circles about how long it's going to take to have AI writing cases to go before the High Court because it's just so effective at analysing data and producing arguments. Vivek, is there a way to include graphs and infographics based on data? There are some tools out there. We did want to try and find one for this presentation, but... 
To be honest, we haven't found the tool that really knocked us out of the park yet. I feel like data is a really hard area because everybody's use case is so specific and what you're trying to extract is so specific. The one that I have seen, which is mind blowing, but out of the range of mere mortals is Watson from IBM, which is utterly ridiculous what it does with data. But I don't think we can even get access to that as a normal human being. You've got to be a mega company to get access to that stuff. Mid Journey is a paid tool. Yep, that's true. Everything we've shown you today with is... Okay, there's most of the time it's like there's a free version and you're going to have some capabilities and then once you pay for the, you pay for the more sophisticated ver- version obviously you get the whole set of tools yet yeah, there are freer free alternatives um i guess the question is whether you're doing it just on the side and want a little thing or if you're happy to it's not crazy budget mid journey is very affordable it's a couple of hundred bucks honestly for what it saves you in terms of effort yeah it's ridiculous so cheap yeah a good comment there from Jason around the fact that Midjourney is paid, but there are other free image generators. What's interesting about Midjourney, it's based on the Discord platform, which is all the rage. If you haven't heard about Discord, it's probably just worth reading an article about what it's become. But other, and I'm not saying this is the case with Playground AI, which he's pointed out, but there are other tools on the internet that basically plug into Midjourney and use it as the image generation engine. Same with ChatGPT. Yep. You've seen that all over the internet yeah, too, seen, right? Uh, there's, for instance, now a travel one, I can't remember the name right now, that where you can enter your destination, your dates of travel, the amount of time that you're going for, and it's going to provide you with an itinerary. And that's, in fact, powered by ChatGPT. So it's got a different skin on it, different name, but it's that powers it. There's a question from Ursula here around what... AI video recording of content, an example like webinar for students, if a teacher can't fill, a, fill the spot and needs AI to cover. I'm not sure about that specific use case. I haven't shared, I haven't shared the one tool, AI tool that I used to generate a lot of content for today and to do a lot of practice for this. And I do a lot of video work. I haven't shared that one tool. Why? I want, to, I want you to come to the next session. So I'm going to keep that one up my sleeve. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Ingrid, you're allowed to like, give me a thumbs down. Like that's very uncool, but that's how storytelling works. So <laughs> come back for chapter two. <laughs> it looks like we're out of questions here. So we're going to wrap this up now. It's been fantastic having you here. Once again, recordings will come through to you by email. Please share that with your colleagues now because guaranteed in a couple of months, that's going to be out of date. And there will be a new live stream. And that's why you need to hit that follow button up on the Global Societies LinkedIn page.